Principal Anthony is setting up for an assembly. He knows that 30 students will be attending. He sets up four rows of chairs with nine chairs in each row. Are there enough chairs for 30 students? In this lesson, you will learn how to solve multiplication problems by creating an array. Let's review. You already know that multiplication is the same as repeated addition. 5 times 3 can be rewritten as 5 plus 5 plus 5, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. I could also show 5 plus 5 plus 5 as three groups of tally marks. Or, under each of these threes, I could draw three dots to represent five equal groups of three. If I count all these dots, I will find the total or product of 5 times 3, which equals 15. This rectangular shape I made is called an array. When we make an array to represent a multiplication problem, it will always be a rectangle. An array is made up of rows and columns. The factors in the multiplication problem represent the number of rows and the number of columns. Or we can think of an array as having three rows with five marks in each row. A common mistake is to lose track of the marks in the array as you count. Here's a 4x4 four four array. To make sure I don't lose track of my counting, I will put the total number of marks in each row at the end of the row. Watch as I do this. 4, 8, 12, 16. A 4x4 four four array has 16 marks in all. 4 times 4 equals 16. Now I'll show you how to make an array to find the product of 6 times 2. Like with repeated addition, there are two ways we can represent 6 times 2 as an array. The first is, we can make an array that has 6 rows with 2 marks in each row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows with 2 marks in each row. That gives us a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 marks in the whole array, so 6 times 2 should equal 12. Let's try making a slightly different array. This time, we'll have two rows with six marks in each row. One, two rows with six marks in each row. That gives us six, twelve again. Either way, we create this array. We get twelve in all. Six times two equals twelve. You may notice that these two rectangles are the same size and shape, and you would be right. That is true for the two arrays you can make for any multiplication problem. When we go back to our original question, we need to know how many chairs the principal has set up, or what 4 times 9 is. We can figure this out by drawing an array. Remember, we can make an array that has 4 rows and 9 marks in each row, or an array with 9 marks and 4 marks in each row. Either would work, but I will make an, ar make an array that represents the way Principal Anthony is setting his chairs up, which is 4 rows with 9 chairs in each. This time I will use chairs instead of dots. It doesn't matter what symbol you use to make an array. First, I will record a chair for each row. Then I will fill in nine chairs per row. One, two, three, four, and nine chairs per row. Now that I've made my array, I will count the total number of marks in the array to find the product of four times nine. When I have a larger number of marks to count, it's helpful for me to keep track of how many chairs I've drawn at the end of each row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. This array has 36 chairs in it. Are there enough chairs for 30 students? Yes, there are more than enough chairs for 30 students at the assembly. In this lesson, you have learned how to solve multiplication problems by creating an array.